Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to another low-level learning tutorial. Uh, today we're going to go over ARC64 or ARM64 assembly, and by the end of this you should be able to write a Hello World program. So let's dive into it. Um, if you haven't already seen my other video on ARM assembly, go ahead and check that out. I'll put it in the description. Uh, we go, go over this slide a little more in depth, but basically uh, writing assembly, which is the layer below the high-level language um, in a form that is not yet understandable by the computer, and then we put that assembly into an assembler that puts it to machine code that the uh, computer can then execute. So like I said before, today we're going to go over uh, ARC64. ARC64 is the 64-bit version of the ARM architecture. Uh, because of that, it's still a RISC instruction set, so reduced instruction set compiler, which basically just means that it has you know, fewer instructions than your typical like Intel. Um, yep, and it's a 64-bit it's a architecture, which means that it is 64-bit addressable, meaning it can address a 64-bit wide space. Um, and in this case, the instructions are also 64 bits uh, normally. Um, the biggest change that you'll notice between this and ARM32 is that the registers are now referred to as X0 and X30. Um, so you can actually address the registers two ways. So you can look at them as X0, for example, that will get you the 64-bit register. Um, you can also refer to X0 as W0, which gets the 32-bit lower half of that same register, so right here. And then if I say R0 at all, um, you can still call the registers R0, R1, R2, um, and that's just a, you know, a reference to, to X0 for that example. Um, the architecture is still byte addressable, which means that you can address a single byte in memory. You don't have to address an entire word, like MIPS, for, for example. Um, and similarly to how uh, ARM32 had thumb mode and ARM mode, um, this architecture has 64-bit mode and 32-bit mode. Um, and both of those modes have a user and supervisor mode. Uh, similar to ARM, right, ARM32, 64-bit ARM is the same way. Uh, to do an assembly instruction, you have your operator, you have your destination, and you have your source. So for example, to move the value 4 into x0, the instruction is move into x0 the decimal or the hexadecimal value 4, right? Um, pretty straightforward. And then similar to the previous tutorial, right, to do anything, you know, our process, the user mode area, needs to request a service from the kernel. Uh, and the way we do this is using a system call, which in ARC64 is this instruction, it's service zero or system service zero. Um, and then when that instruction gets ran, the kernel takes action. Uh, the action that it performs, the syscall number, is stored into x8 and x0 through 4 determine how we do it. Very similar to how uh, ARM32 did uh, system calls. So let's pull open RVM here. Let me get rid of some of the answers that I have already written. Boom, boom. All right. So here's our VM. We're doing a little bit of work in this. Um, so if you haven't already, go ahead and make sure you install not sudo Wireshark, sudo app install. Uh, it's GCC 7 arc. So if you type that in, I already have this. Um, you should install this and then also sudo apt install kimu. Right, so similar to the previous tutorial, I'm using an Intel architecture VM, but I'm able to test my code using kimu. Kimu is the emulator suite that allows you to run cross-compiled code in a not cross-compiled environment. It's pretty cool. Um, cool, so let, let's write some assembly, right? I think like, like last time, step one, we should, um, figure out how to implement the exit system call. Okay, cool, how do we do that? Um, we need to first identify what the system call number is for exit, right? Because all because exit was system call one in ARM32 does not mean it's system call one in ARM64, right? That if they change the kernel at all, if they change the binary ABI, right? The way that the binary talks to the kernel, uh, that system call number could change. So we gotta look it up in a table. And the way we do that, is by, if you go to Google, you type in uh, R64 syscall table. Chromium, just like last time, provides these really good documents on the system call table um, for ARM64. Cool, so we have ARM64. They are a little different. The uh, 
more standard like POSIX compliance system calls are handled in the like 64 to 90 range. It's kind of weird, right? So you have like right here, um, we'll find exit is system call 93 or OX5D. Okay, great. So let's extract this number. So how do we set up a system call, right? So what did I say before? The system call number gets put into X8. So move into X8 the value OX5D. And then what are the arguments to our system call? Well, the error code, right? What it returns. And that goes into X0. Great. So we'll put that into, we'll return uh, OX41. And then how do we invoke the kernel? How do we ask it for help? We say service zero. Boom. So we're gonna write that. And just like last time, the way we're gonna compile this is we're gonna uh, first call the assembler, right? So it's gonna be arc Linux new AS. Uh, we're going to assemble our file, which is 001.asm for me, it could be anything for you guys. And then we're gonna output an object file. Cool, no compiler, or no assembler errors rather. And, and the object file is the intermediate elf. It's not executable in its current format because it's not fully compiled into an elf. It just contains symbol information and code information that we, we care about. And the way we get it to the final executable format is we invoke GCC, on it and we said we wanna compile our object file and output an executable elf. Okay, we're gonna get this error at first and that's because we're trying to compile it against libc. We don't wanna do that, so we say no standard lib. And for the purposes of this tutorial, we're also gonna say tax static because there's issues with the arc 64 build environment on uh, Ubuntu 16, so. Great, no, uh, no compiler errors after we add those two flags. And then to test our code, we do kimu arc64 r code awesome and if we did this correctly we should get the error code for one or 65 as the output and we do cool all right so now that we've written some basic assembly let's get to that hello world right so just like last time we have to define a label called message again and the message is type ascii and it's hello world new line Awesome, so we've added that. And then we need to set up our system call. We need to add one, right? Because right here we have a exit system call to get us out of the program. The, out of the program. Now we need to do a write system call to put data to the screen. So what are the arguments for write? Let's see. So write is system call 64 and it takes argument r or x0 as fd, so the descriptor we're gonna write to. Remember in Linux, we have file descriptor standard in, out, and zero as zero, one, and two. Sorry, standard in, out, error as file descriptor zero, one, and two. So fd will be set to one, the standard out file descriptor that represents the data that goes to the screen. Um, x1 will be a pointer to the buffer we're writing and uh, X2 will contain the length of that buffer. Great. So let's do that. Move X8, the system call number, which I said was 64. X0 is the file descriptor, so it's gonna be one, which is standard out. X1, okay, so this is where it gets a little different, right? We're dealing with um, memory operations. So instead of move, we need to load into X1. So we're loading into X1 the address with the equal sign does of the message label, okay? And then finally move into X2, the length of the thing we're writing. So what is it? It's going to be 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then we invoke a system call. Cool, so what are we doing here? We are setting up the system call number, telling it to write to standard out, loading the address of our message into X1, the pointer to our buffer, and setting 13 as the length of our buffer, writing it to the screen, and then getting out of the program safely. All right, let's try it out. 
symbol compile run it great so we ran our little world guys i hope you learned something if you did please drop a comment and uh give me some ideas what you want to learn next time thanks for watching i hope you tune in again bye